You're listening to a New York Jets episode of the Jacob Falk Show. He's breaking down the team's latest goings on as only he can. Follow him on Twitter at Real Jacob Falk. Here he is, Jacob Falk. Hello, Jets fans. Welcome to another New York Jets instant recap here. On the Jacob Volk Show, I am Jacob Volk, and it's amazing. The New York Jets, eight days ago, were 0-13. They had been demolished by the Seahawks 40-3. to It looked like there wasn't a snowball's chance in hell that they were going to win a game. Then they beat the Rams and the Browns. Two playoff teams. The New York Jets are going to finish with multiple wins in a season where it was a real possibility that they were going to go 0-16. You have to give Adam Gase a little bit of credit. This team never stopped playing for him. All this stuff about he's a tough coach to get along with, no one likes playing for him, look at all the players he's run out of town, The proof is in the pudding. The Jets very easily could have keeled over and died. But they're going to finish with multiple wins. I'm not saying that Gase should come back. This game against the Patriots next week should be Adam Gase's last game as New York Jets head coach. What he does this month shouldn't override the three previous months. Adam Gase's Jets head coach is 5-4 and four in December. In all other months, he has either three or four wins. Something like that. So give him credit for not letting the team die on him, but there's no possible way that he comes back as Jets head coach. The fans would riot. The Johnsons have not been perfect owners, but I find it hard to believe that they would bring a head coach back who in his two seasons with the Jets will finish with only nine or ten wins. I don't see that happening. Do I think Adam Gase is a terrible coach? No. I don't think he's as bad as some people are making him out to be. I think he's below average. But I think he's done as good a job as anyone could in maximizing the talent that he has to work with. And that word talent should be in air quotes. I mean, there's a reason that even though the Browns were down all of their wide receivers except Marvin Hall, the Browns were still favored. There's a reason that the Rams were such heavy favorites last week. It's because this team has no talent. I don't think anyone could make the pieces work. Again, I'm not saying Gase is a good head coach. I think he's below average, but I don't think he's as bad as most people are making him out to be. The fact that he didn't let this team die on him is pretty impressive. Now, before I get into the Trevor Lawrence end of things, 
Let me talk about the game that we just saw. Sam Darnold wasn't awful. He wasn't great. He completed just 50% of his passes for 175 yards and two touchdowns. He is making the decision of whether or not to move on from him kind of tough. Are there players who I would move on from him for? Absolutely. Deshaun Watson, Dak Prescott, I've said that before. But guys like Justin Fields or Zach Wilson, I'm not sure. I really need to think about that. I need to see what Fields does in the Sugar Bowl. Jamison Crowder had a fantastic game. The guy caught a touchdown pass and threw a touchdown pass. That was without question the best game he's ever had as a Jet. And one of the best games he's had in his NFL career. Braxton Berrios did a good job of catching that ball. You could tell he was excited. He's a guy who pumps up his teammates. I like Berrios. Chris Herndon had four catches for 34 yards and a touchdown. It's nice to see him starting to contribute a little bit. The big story, though, is the defense. Arthur Mollette had a really good game. The guy isn't playing his natural position. He's a cornerback by nature. He's moved over to safety. You know what? He played really well. Marcus May played well. This may have been the best game that the secondary has had all year. Now that's fitting because the Browns were playing with JV receivers. But give him credit. They played well. Terrell Basham played really well. Nathan Shepard played really well. Foley Fatu Kasi played really well. John Franklin Myers played really well. The Cleveland Browns are one of the best teams in the NFL in terms of running the football. You know how many rushing yards they had in this game? 45. That's it. Nick Chubb had 11 carries for just 28 yards. Kareem Hunt had 4 carries for just 11 yards. They both averaged under 3 yards per carry. For any defense to do that, let alone this abysmal Jets defense, is nothing short of incredible. Give Frank Bush some credit. They put Baker Mayfield behind the eight ball early. Mayfield was forced to throw the ball 53 times. As much as I like Mayfield... You don't want him throwing the ball 53 times. Especially when he has no wide receivers. I mean, Jamarcus Bradley had a good game. Five catches for 60 yards. But you could tell that Mayfield really didn't want to throw the ball to his wide receivers. He wanted to get the ball to his tight ends. And his running backs. The defense was great. The offense was solid. At the end of the day, Jets fans, be happy. You didn't have much of a chance at securing the first overall pick entering today. So you might as well root for a win. You beat a really good Browns team. And maybe, just maybe, you made it so you won't have the longest active playoff drought in the NFL. If the Browns miss out, the Browns are still in first place. The Jets are in second. But look, I know that's not what most Jets fans care about. They care about the fact that with the second overall pick, they're going to miss out on Trevor Lawrence. 
if the Jaguars stay at first overall, they will take Trevor Lawrence. There is no way they roll with Gardner Minshew. Okay, I know I've said in the past that there is that possibility, but no. The guy was benched for Mike Glennon. Do I like Minshew? Yes. Do I think Gardner Minshew deserved to be benched? Absolutely not. But the reality is, if the Jaguars stay at first overall, they're taking Trevor Lawrence. There is no way around it. But the reason I'm phrasing it that way is I don't think it's a guarantee that they stay at first overall. The Jaguars have such a huge hole at defense, you could drive a Mack truck through it. They just gave up 41 points to the Mitchell Trubisky-led Chicago Bears. Trevor Lawrence wouldn't be able to help in that regard. Could the Jaguars be talked in to a godfather offer? Second overall, the Seahawks pick, probably Quinn and Williams, as much as that stinks. I love Quinn and Williams. I don't want to trade him, but for Trevor Lawrence, I will do it. And you kick in some other picks. At the end of the day, that helps the Jaguars more than just taking Trevor Lawrence. This team hasn't given up less than 20 points all season. To expect Trevor Lawrence to come in and immediately win games with this garbage Jaguars defense is ridiculous. As God is my witness, this is the truth. If I was taking over the Jacksonville Jaguars... I would be very intrigued by the possibility of trading down with the Jets. You may be asking yourself, what are the Jaguars going to do with quarterback then? There's no easy answer there. The easiest thing to say would be you sign a guy like Cam Newton or Andy Dalton, or Tyrod Taylor, maybe Jameis Winston, or Jacoby Brissett, and you go from there. But I understand that that doesn't excite you if you're a Jaguars fan. If you trade down so that you're not getting Trevor Lawrence and you end up replacing him with a guy like Cam Newton or Andy Dalton, the guy whose best days are behind him, yeah, that's going to cause an uproar. Do you push for Sam Darnold in that type of a trade? Give me second overall, the Seahawks pick, Quinn and Williams, and instead of one of those other picks, give me Sam Darnold. It's possible... But if the Jets are willing to choose Trevor Lawrence over Sam Darnold, why would you pick Sam Darnold over Trevor Lawrence? I mean, there is another element to that. Maybe the Jaguars, with Darnold and the second overall pick, trade for Dak Prescott. They're not going to get Deshaun Watson. There's no way the Texans would trade Deshaun Watson within their division. Prescott? It's possible. The Cowboys like Sam Darnold. They've been linked to him in the past. I mean, think about it. If you trade down and then trade for Prescott, you have a franchise quarterback, a franchise defensive stalwart, and you have other picks that you can beef up your defense with. 
I understand that there are a lot of moving parts there. Would the Jets trade Quinn and Williams? Would the Cowboys trade Dak Prescott? But I can make a very strong argument that the best thing for the Jaguars to do is that two-trade scenario. Is it Madden-like? Absolutely. But stranger things have happened. We just saw the Jets knock off the Rams and Browns in back-to-back weeks. We just saw Ryan Fitzpatrick throw a sensational pass to Mac Hollins while he was being face-masked in a play that would make Conrad Dobler blush. Stranger things have happened, is my point. Do you roll with Gardner Minshew for a full year? You just say, damn the torpedoes. I'm going to roll with this guy for 16 games. And whatever happens, happens. I could be talked into that, but I don't think that's going to happen. New regimes mean new quarterbacks. Maybe with the second overall pick, you take Justin Fields or Zach Wilson. Maybe whoever comes in as the new GM doesn't think there's that big of a gap between Lawrence and the next best quarterback. So he'd be willing to move down one spot and accumulate other assets. Is it wishful thinking? Probably. If I had to put money on it, Trevor Lawrence is probably going to be a Jacksonville Jaguar. There is always the chance that he pulls a power play. I don't want to play for Jacksonville. I don't want to play there. I don't like the market. I don't like that I'm going to have to spend a lot of time in London. I want to play in New York. Very possible. Then the Jaguars would be more motivated to trade the first overall pick. Is the most likely scenario Trevor Lawrence opening up the 2021 NFL season as the Jaguars starter? The answer is yes. But is there a small possibility that he could open up that season as the Jets starting quarterback? It's small, but it's there. And until that light is extinguished, I'm going to hold on to it. The A1 scenario for the Jets next year is Trevor Lawrence as their starting quarterback. That's just fact. As for what the B2 scenario would be, it's probably a guy like Deshaun Watson or Dak Prescott. C3? I don't know. It's either Darnold Or you use that second overall pick on a quarterback. I can't make that determination just yet. Another three-day week next week for regular episodes of the Jacob Volk Show. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then I'm taking New Year's Eve and New Year's Day off. You will get a New York Jets instant recap after their game against the Patriots. Then the day after that, January 4th, three shows. Brooklyn Nets in the morning. Regular episode of the Jacob Volk Show in the afternoon. Probably a big Black Monday recap along with some other stuff. And then in the evening, New York Jets offseason preview. Speaking of the Brooklyn Nets, you are going to get a Brooklyn Nets show tomorrow evening. After the regular episode of the Jacob Volk Show is posted in the afternoon. The evening of January 11th, you're going to get a New York Islanders season preview. So no NHL preview, but a New York Islanders season preview. Again, that's going to be in the evening. And I'm going to alternate in the evenings from there. Nets on the 4th. Islanders on the 11th, Nets on the 18th, 
Islanders on the 25th, etc., etc. I'll put a finer point on all that on Wednesday. Until next time, I am Jacob Volk saying that Branch Ricky would go into the vault to get change for a nickel.